before I came on stage, less than an hour ago, I had the privilege of having a decent conversation with one of the committee members who's from Sudan. And he complained about something of us Malaysians, that when he participated in one of the marathons here in Perak, the person asked for his nationality, the form asked for his nationality. And even though all countries were stated specifically, in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, but when it comes to Africa, it's magically combined as one country, not as a region. And he said, Sadiq, you have to change the mindsets of Malaysians in this regard. And I looked at him in this humiliating look that five years ago, I was that person. I would be the person who put in the form by saying that Africa is a country, not a region. I thought Egypt was a continent and not a country. Everyone has a life journey in which they undertake. And my journey in debating started approximately five years ago. And it was then when I answered the person's question, when he asked me, must you be born talented for you to be a good debater and public speaker? Or can you construct your own identity as time passes by? For me, I had to construct it on my own. Five years ago, my English was horrendous. I will not get A's for English papers. And mind you, my mum is a brilliant English teacher, Guru Chamalang. And all the students she taught got A's in English, but not me. I don't blame my mum. I'll always argue with her going, oh, kita kena perkasakan bahasa kebangsaan. Bahasa, you know that kind of stuff, right? It will, it will take a long time to go on that road. But debating liberated me from my past and brought me to where I'm at today. And whenever someone asks me whether it's possible to uplift themselves from an echo chamber of bigotry, ignorance, I'll always say as long as you have the passion in you, as long as you believe in a mantra when there's a will, there's a way, these things will indeed be very much possible. But one thing which even you have a will, not a way, is to control technology. I do not have that thing, yeah? <laughs> Thank you. I want to briefly share where I started before. Besides English, besides the Africa example and the Egypt example, I was a bigot back then. A bigot means that I always believed that I was in a position of superiority as a man, as a Malay majority in Malaysia, as a Muslim, in Muslim majority in Malaysia. I used to discriminate those who do not share the same commonalities as me. I personally label those who disagree with me as ignorant individuals who deserve to be burned in hellfire. It's not something people should love. It was a horrendous path. And it's a path which, up until today, I'm trying my best to correct I will not be able to change my past, but at least I'll be able to correct the future to make up for the injustice which I've committed in the past. But that was where I was before. So not only was I ignorant of the realities around me, but I used the reality in my favour to entrench what I believe at the expense of others who do not share the same belief in me. It was debating which allowed me to liberate myself and to get me where I'm at today. And I started when I was in the Royal Military College. To those who of you from this amazing college, you should join the site of advertisement. But it taught me diversity, the ability to speak, to think critically, and that's when I decided to join debating. And obviously when I first started, I couldn't even speak for one minute. Debating, you know, you need to speak for seven minutes, never for one minute. And it was a bad, bad experience. But in that five-year time, I progressed a lot. And I'll spend less time, and I want to explain how debating can liberate all of us in three specific ways. But that was my background. Alhamdulillah, I think after approximately four years, that's when the first time I was crowned the Asian champion. 
Asian best speaker, and from there onward, went on to Europe, Oxford, Cambridge, and the World Debate Championship. But whenever someone asks me, what is the most important thing which made me succeed as a debater, I'll always say it's the passion and the never-ending pursuit for knowledge which gives me oxygen as every single day as I debate, I do not treat it as a pastime activity, as an extracurricular sport, but I treat it as a critical identity, as a lifestyle. It's not a coat which I wear and take out after the debate tournament. It's something which I carry with me wherever I go, 24 hours a day, seven times a week, for the rest of my life. And I'll always say that debating has assisted me in three particular ways. And I believe that these ways, if shared around, if nationalised, can become a critical tool of liberation for Malaysians and also those of the international global community. The first one is debating the tool to combat bigotry. Not only did debating liberate me from the eco chamber of bigotry, but I realised that debating provided the structures which allowed for me to liberate myself. And this should be carried on to society. Not only is the debate community very diverse, inclusive, open, but at the same time, debating as a sport compels you to challenge existing dogmas and belief. For you to not just take an idea and consume it without critically assessing and deconstructing the utility of that idea. So when I taught debating public speaking in international relations in my university, International Islamic University of Malaysia, I encountered a lot of students, some from very strong religious backgrounds from Saudi Arabia, who will always ask me, always in the first class, Saudi, how can you debate on topics like Palestine and Israel, and at times compelling you to defend an Israeli position? And I told him that if I'm able to argue from an Israeli standpoint, and after the debate, still holding firm to my belief that we should liberate the Palestinians, they should care for them, and justice should be carried out, that means I've understood both positions, but yet my principles are strong. As a Muslim and as a Malaysian, my system of belief or my principles is not tied to fear. I'm not so weak till a point that words or mere understanding and knowledge of the other side's viewpoint can weaken my stance. That is something which I went through and something which I believe should be shared around. That's why I love teaching, debating, public speaking. And to date, I've travelled to more than 25 countries from different regions, teaching, debating, public speaking, the Malaysian team, my university, and others. Because I believe that this is something which is particularly important. And even besides that, when I debated in Berlin for one of the largest debate tournaments in the world, my teammate was Arina Najwa, a hijabi lady. I remember when we went up against teams from Harvard, Oxford, and Cambridge, I remember whenever they viewed us, A, when, as soon as they knew the International Islamic University, would be like, ah, oh, this must be a very easy team to defeat. It's an unfortunate misconception that Muslims will only argue by using weapons and bullets. They were incapable to use narratives, words to deconstruct ideas, and to argue why we are right by not using violence. And especially because my friend was, was hijabi, there's a misconception that she's very timid, she cannot argue intellectually. But after the round, when we won, that's when they went up to us and said, oh, it's really good, I didn't expect for there to be speakers like this in Malaysia, especially in the Muslim community. I know they mean well, I don't want to go like this freaking bigoted person, I'm not going to say that. I know they mean well. But it made me realise that it can be a tool to liberate other people from their implicit, subconscious, subliminal bigotries. Because when we interact with those around us, share the knowledge which we have in the very diverse community, it becomes much more likely. I think that's why debating will create a brilliant platform, community and a very inclusive one, to liberate those from the clutches of bigotry. Secondly, is the intellectual lifestyle in which it embeds at a very young age. Debating is not the same like public speaking, or at times even in politics where you have years, if not months, to prepare the topic. Often the topic will only be given to you 15 minutes before you argue, 
And the topics are on a diverse range of issues. Can be from international politics, politics how to deconstruct ISIS in Yemen and Syria, from local politics on very sensitive topics, which I'm not in position to disclose here, and also to very nonchalant topics like Batman and Superman in a hypothetical world, what should we do? It's on a range, I'm not kidding, it's on a range of topics. And in 15 minutes, without any reference to the internet, you must be an expert in the topic, you must argue it well. Debating compels a person to take up their intellectual lifestyle, for you to read every day, and to not treat that as something which is very burdensome, but as an asset which you undertake every single day. That if you fail to cover one element of the world, you might suffer in that round, and you might suffer in a humiliating way. I mean, I thought I covered things well. I, every year I read BBC, Al Jazeera, CNN. One of the tournaments I went to Singapore, the finals was on freaking Iron Man. And I do not watch Iron Man. I was like, what in the world is happening? And like, there's one on Harry Potter, I know you're going to boo me because I do not watch Harry Potter. I was like, I was like, oh my God. Yeah, I mean, I died. I died, got, I got screwed really badly in that round. But it tells me that there are always room for improvement. And it's those rooms which I always love to research on because no one will start off the perfect debater, the walking Wikipedia, walking encyclopedia, knowing everything. But debating compels you to read up and for you to take up the intellectual lifestyle in order for you to become a much better person. The final thing is also that it makes you a global citizen. And this is why I keep on emphasizing to the Malaysian debate community and the international debate community. Debating in Malaysia is a very big thing, even though to some specific individuals they say it's not big. But we have approximately 50,000 debaters in Malaysia. It's a very big community. But I always tell them that we cannot just care about these topics when we debate in the debate room. And when we exit the room, we shut our eyes and ears to the problems which are taking place in our country and abroad, that we should not care simply because we will not be rewarded by trophies and prize money and status and positions. Because debating provides empathy. When you know, you research about the topic, you debate about it with your colleagues critically, and you find your principle and what you personally believe in, you cannot simply divorce yourself from that principle when you exit the debate room and think that the world is perfectly fine even though you depicted it in a different way in the debate round. Debating makes you a global citizen. You care. It builds empathy. You open up your eyes and ears to problems happening across the world. When you argue about how the gypsies are being persecuted in some of the most wealthiest parts of Europe, when the Rohingyas are being systematically wiped out in the state of Myanmar, you don't just argue it without actually empathizing with those problems. And that's why we see, albeit in Malaysia slowly, but across the world, debaters are some of the most vocal people in pursuing for justice, locally and abroad. And that's my wish and my vision, is to transform all Malaysians to take up this debate mindset. And again, there's a misconception that you must be a competitive debater, you must join tournaments in order, in order for you to be a debater. I don't believe in that. I think all of us, in our own respective ways, are debaters with their own quality. The fact that we will argue with our parents occasionally, we'll argue with our girlfriends, or maybe friends, family, lecturers. The fact that there is an intellectual discourse which takes place is indicative that all of us are debaters. But it's about translating that ability to argue and think critically through a positive platform, a platform which unites us all through the culture of intellect and therefore liberating those who did not share the same privilege as us. Again, I'm not going to mention names, even though there are some who would say, bahawa debat bukan budaya kita. But I think it's time for us to change that mindset and that rhetoric to make it a critical part of our identity. Identity as Malaysians, not as ones which are submissive, ones which will simply consume anything which is given to us without critically analysing it, Instead, we are an intellectual community, a diverse community, a community which challenges concepts and only accepting it when it is in line with a principle which 
abide by the rules and laws which govern our society. I think that should be the future which Malaysia should look at. Everyone, through debating or their own passion and hobby, will find their own identity and lifestyle. Some will, will, might gravitate closer to their religious belief, to their nationality, to whatever common identities which they find. And that's the beauty of debating. One thing which debating made me found and strengthened the identity which I was in was my love for my beloved country. Mind you, before this, I didn't care what happened around me. I was late in responding and speaking up for those who suffered. But debating gave me the platform and equipped me with the tools to speak up and to ensure the very same injustice which I was a part of through implicit complicity is a system which I owe a duty to deconstruct. Debating made me closer to my country and it always reminds me that no matter where we are at, who we are, what system of belief we subscribe upon, as long as we see ourselves as Malaysians, we can overcome the problems which confront us. And no matter how many countries I've traveled, I still have not found a country which is better than Malaysia. Whenever I'm abroad, when I speak to Malaysian students and they say that I want to stay abroad, work there, I do no longer want to come back to Malaysia, I keep on telling them that Malaysia is not defined by one person or one group. Malaysia is a country which is governed by 30 million people who are diverse and beautiful. Malaysia is not a country which submits to defeat without challenging it through the power as one united front, a front called the Malaysian Front. Malaysia is not a country in which we have failed whenever a problem is confronts us. We have taken down the British, the Portuguese, the Dutch, the Japanese, and we are here today because of those troubled past, and yet we have overcome it as one collective society, as one united Malaysian society. No matter what people say, no matter how much pessimism exists in our society, let us not forget that the future which we will live in is a future which we have a duty to craft and create as one united society. And that future, believe me, no matter how pessimistic it might look, but if we are united in confronting those problems, similarly how our forefathers and mothers deconstructed those problems and got us to where we are today, we will be able to do the same. I would like to end it something which I always remind my fellow colleagues out there. Jangan kita sesekali lupa. Let us never forget that it's not only my home, it's not only your home, it is our home together forever. Thank you.